Okay, so I posted a video about atheism and meaning, and I got a couple of responses. One, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to you because it underscores something. Okay, so somebody said no intrinsic meaning in life. Yes, I agree, and I like it. No intrinsic meaning or purpose means that I am free, capital letters, to choose my own meaning and purpose. I am not a hammer whose purpose is to hit nails. I'm not just a cog in someone's machine, a puppet in someone's play. I am a free agent. Much, much, much prefer that to being created for another being's purpose, another being's reason. I find the idea of existing for another purpose deeply creepy, okay, and frightening. So I agree with your analysis and I have the opposite emotional response. Interesting. Eh. It is kind of interesting. That's why I'm reading it. Uh, because his response is actually the initial response is atheism as a movement or a sociological phenomenon. Um, the first initial response to, to the idea that there is no God is exactly what he was talking about. Now, we both seem to agree, or at least he's, he's honest enough and smart enough to agree that if there is no God, there is no intrinsic meaning to life. You were not put here for any purpose whatsoever. You were not, there is no thing you need to do with your life. There's no such thing as a calling. There's no such thing as a personal destiny. That's why I said that this all, all of a sudden starts bristling with some people. Even just me saying those words. Some people are already going to start to be, there's just no, there's no way that's true. That's why I said it violated something deep within him. But his response is, is a kind of response. And it's the initial response of, of atheism as it played out in the, uh, sociologically. The initial idea was, yeah, there are no gods, there are no masters. Awesome. Let's have a cool rock and roll party. There's nothing I need to do with my time. And it was, it, there was a, a whiff of liberation in it. Even a hint of revolution, you know. I wasn't put here for a reason, so I can make of my life what I will. Now, we go further down, we start to find atheists who, who um, in particular, I'm thinking of Camus. Uh, we start to find atheists who realize the hidden implications of this freedom. Yes, the initial impulse to most people or to a certain type of human being, and those human beings tend to become atheists, <laughs> is, wow, that's liberating. That's cool for me. Good. There's no, there is no purpose to my life. So I sort it out for myself. I get to construct my meaning for myself. I get to build my life uh, in, consistent with my own values, but there's no such thing as an intrinsic meaning, and I need not find it. Now, part of why I said that the majority of people don't think this way is because there's just so much, you know, even when you're young and stupid, you say, I'm going out to, I'm going, going out to California. Why? To find myself. Like there is a self there to be found, that there is a role there to be played. There is some form of identity out there for you. Some sort of purpose you were created to fulfill. Some reason for your being here. That's what most people feel deep inside of them. Deep inside of them. Um, now, somebody else commented that just because most people feel that to be true, they could be wrong. Yes, they could be wrong. But I'm trying to go somewhere deeper with this because there is, if, if in fact you are correct and there is no God, then there is metaphysical nil and it has to be accounted for, it has to be dealt with. And one of the ways that the modern day atheists account for this is they pretend that it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't have any philosophical implications that are deep and hard to reconcile. And it's huge ones. Huge ones. That's what I was trying to point out. Living a life without meaning may at first glance seem very, very, very liberating to a certain type of person, especially if you grew up in a restricted environment. If you were raised fundamentalist, I can understand the appeal of that to a certain degree. I was raised as a rock and roll rebel. So, you know, when I started getting past the age of 30, my impulses were different. It's like, I better settle down and find some order and meaning and sanity in my life. Exact opposite thing I was looking for. But, 
there is still a philosophical, deep philosophical existential quandary there that he is telling me is cool for him. Maybe it's cool for him, but it ain't going to be cool for a lot of people. Camus wrestled with this on a much deeper level. The way that Richard Dawkins solves the problem is he pretends it doesn't exist. He doesn't go deep enough to look that it's actually a problem. He glosses right over it. Pretends it's, it's living a life without meaning is somehow easy. Ah, no big deal. Find my own meaning. Ah, no big deal. Not, everybody, not everybody's going to have the gift for building. <laughs> Say, oh, it's great, I construct my own meaning, it's liberation. Not, I'm, I'm talking about the, a broader implication of the philosophy as a whole and how it is going to impact people's lives and how and the, the hidden metaphysical implications that you can gloss over or pretend don't exist, but you're going to have to contend with them in a real way because... There is a construct here that if you take down, you're going to need to rebuild in another form. Now, this is something that has already been talked about prior to the, begin to the 20th century. Atheism was a radically appealing or was an appealing idea to a certain type of artist and a certain type of philosopher, and it took root and had a movement. We are now at the tail end of that movement where it's become popularized by people like Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens. But it's an, an initial impulse. People were talking, the, the, the initial people grappling with atheism were the philosophers and the existentialists. And they were grappling in a way that was deep. And they wrestled with the implications for society as a whole and individuals other than yourself who have solved the problem for yourself but haven't, but haven't really thought it through on a level of how it impacts other people. So, this is just part two. I'm going to go further with this. There's a lot to say on this subject. And if you have comments that are actually intelligent, I welcome them. You know, oftentimes you don't. You're just saying stupid crap. But, you know, this comment is relatively intelligent. Okay, that's all on that for now. Bye.